Chef Alex just prepped some amazing bison New York strips with some awesome silver dollar potatoes. Let's see how he did. Fabulous as always. Oh, Chef Alex doesn't miss. Check out how to do it. If you're like me and you want to diet without it feeling like dieting, you should absolutely consider trading in your standard New York strip for a bison New York strip. Why? Well, the devil's in the details. I'm not much of a calorie counter or macro counter, but I am aware that the bison is significantly leaner. So if you look at four ounces of bison, it has 26 grams of protein, but it only has about 130 calories. Whereas a New York strip has about 230 calories for the same size, same protein content. I guarantee if you eat these side by side, they will taste incredibly similarly, but the good news is you can eat a little bit more liberally with the bison without feeling guilty because it's less calorically dense. So I'm gonna show you how to cook these, which is a little bit different than steak, just in a bit. No matter what we're cooking, whether it is a regular steak, a bison steak, or even seafood, we want to make sure that the meat gets dehydrated on the outside before we throw it on a pan. We want that dry meat to touch a hot surface so we can get the outside to sear perfectly. So our paper towels are our best friends when we're gonna do that. When we're cooking steaks or any other meal, it typically is one part seasoning, two part searing as far as what is important to get right. So we are going to add salt, pepper, and onion powder before we throw these bison steaks on the pan. And contrary to popular opinion, salt, unless you are salt sensitive, is actually very good for athletic performance, which in turn is very good for a resting metabolic rate that is through the moon. That's why I can look like this without counting calories, going hungry year round, eating delicious food all the time because I have a high resting metabolic rate. And what enables me to have a high resting metabolic rate in part is getting my sodium, which lets my muscles fire at high intensity when I'm in the gym. So we put our salt on one side, then we're gonna throw a little bit of pepper on there. Then we're gonna throw a little bit of onion powder on there. And then we're gonna flip it. And then we're gonna do the same on side number two. First thing we wanna do is turn the stove on high heat. And then we're going to want to have a healthy amount of butter on there. We don't want too much butter because too much butter actually acts as a liquid, making it very challenging to sear the meat. But we don't wanna have a sissy amount of butter either because that makes it really hard to keep the whole meat juicy. So what I'm going to suggest is about one and one half tablespoons per steak. So we're gonna start it out with a healthy three tablespoons of butter on the pan. And we're gonna let that sit until it melts. While the butter gets hot on the cast iron pan, we are going to get some garlic ready. We're not gonna chop this garlic. We're actually going to let this garlic sit on the pan so the bison steaks can collect the juice that the garlic cloves are going to emanate. Gonna be delicious. Once we see the butter getting a little bit brown, we can throw our steaks on the pan. When we hear that sizzle, that's how we know we're doing it right. About a minute or a half or so, we're gonna to wanna to just give it a little bit of a pickup, slightly, put it back down, and then we can throw our mashed garlic cloves on the cast iron. And after a couple minutes, when the bottom is a golden brown, we're gonna to want to flip them. 
that needs a little bit longer. We're going to call a little bit of an audible because we need a delicious carb, and I think some potatoes are going to go great. So we just washed and scrubbed those, and we're going to slice some of these about the size of a silver dollar. Now the second bison steak should be ready to turn. That might not be as dark as that one, but we kind of have to flip it because this one's a little bit thinner than that one. So it's not going to be as forgiving. We're going to want to take it up, move the garlic around so it's not burning the whole side. And we might actually want to move this closer to the center of the pan, learning a little bit from how side one went. And then, I like to sear all sides of a thicker New York strip. So we're only gonna do that with this one, not that one, because this one's a little bit thicker. We like it seared well on one side. Now it's seared well on all sides. We'll put it on the fatty side for just a little bit. Then we will flip this to the other side, doesn't want to sit, so I'll lean it against there. See how this bad boy's doing? This one's not searing as well. Sometimes they're not gonna sear as well, and you have to make the executive decision. Do you want to get the better sear, or do you want to have it cooked a little bit better, or in this case, a little bit less well done on the inside? I prefer to hedge my bets. We're gonna stick with a good sear, with the proper medium rare on one side, and then we're gonna have a less good sear, but it's still gonna be medium, medium rare. It's not gonna be overcooked. Now that we got all sides of this bad boy cooked, we're gonna take it off and let it sit. We're gonna move this to the hotter side of the pan. I think there's a little bit of an angle to the stove, which is letting a little bit more liquid come to one side than the other side of the pan impacting the ability to get the perfect sear. But hey, nothing is perfect. We need to know how to adjust on our toes if we're gonna be a good real life chef. Now we're gonna take this bad boy off, let it sit. And while this sits, we are going to take the garlic off the pan. We're gonna throw our potatoes on there. How'd I know? Just the perfect amount. Then we're going to throw some salt on the pan. Probably should have done that first, but it's okay. We'll survive. We're going to add a little bit more butter to this pan. We're going to butter up both sides. We are going to let the steak that was on the grill longest sit the least because we don't want the inside to cook too much. And we are going to start cutting the thinnest side because this side is going to be cooked more and more quickly than this side. So we're going to cut. Look at that. Perfect. Another perfect cut. Perfect. Once we see some bubbling up of moisture on a potato, that means it's ready to be flipped. So we're gonna go, whoops, these two, and that one. Probably this one too. Still gotta wait on these. See, very little moisture coming up. And with the thicker bison steak, we are going to start cutting the thinner side first. No temperature thermometer, of course. We just like to go by feel. Rare, medium, rare, because Chef Alex doesn't miss. Start taking these off the grill. Look for the liquid to come through on both sides. That is a sign 
that they are ready to come off. Looking nice. Looking good. Got to have our ketchup if we're going to eat some potatoes. And so we like Primal Kitchen. Primal Kitchen has no added sugar if we don't want it. Put that on the side. Take our last potato off.